Today I'm answering the question, should you do pistol squats on an elevated surface like plyo boxes and so on? My uh, case, I used to do pistol squats on plyo boxes and steps and such for a while, and it's not a terrible thing, but it was definitely a contributor to my knee pain because it allowed my technique to basically falter to the point where it's causing some tendonitis for the following reasons. So think of it kind of like an immediate, intermediate step, but don't make the mistake I did where I was like, oh, I have to do them on a box. I just don't have the flexibility. My body's not built that way or any other lame excuses that prevent you from doing them on the floor. When you're doing them on a box, you're usually getting this kind of situation. This is uh, oftentimes that whole idea of you know, squat to 90 degrees, don't let your knees come too far forward and all of that uh, garbage that I eventually had to throw out. When you're on the box, a lot of times we're on the box because the foot, we're like, I can't get my foot high enough. Like I, I need to get it, get it elevated, but we blame the hamstrings on the non-working foot uh, leg. But what's going on is a lot of times the knee is still directly over the foot and the hips are still fairly high elevation. So we have this 90 degree sort of deal going on with the working leg. So the hips, we still have a huge gap here between the master joint and the base joint. Check out my video on my three joint thing that I talked about. So we have this kind of situation. Uh, this is easier. It doesn't require nearly as much strength in the glutes, the hamstrings, the quads, calves, everything. So it's way easier than doing them on the floor. And it puts significantly more stress on the back and the knee. So again, it's not terrible, but you wanna get out of this stage as quickly as possible. When you're doing a single leg squat, sorry, I forgot the other leg there. When you're doing it here, the hips have to sink down a huge uh, range of motion much greater degree. So you can see you've got that master joint and base joint almost coming right on to each other. Check out some of the photos online of Al Cavadlo doing his pistol squats. I mean, he's basically sitting on his back heel. The knee is right in the chest versus here, it's more in the lower belly or stomach. The knee is also forward. See the angle here that you got the shin is much more forward versus vertical. This again, I've addressed this in videos. You want your knee to go as far forward as possible in a, in a, in a good squat, a decent squat. And the other thing that we're talking about is yes, it's, it's flexibility, but it's not the flexibility you may be thinking of. It's not the flexibility of the non-squatting leg, but the glutes and hamstrings here, which I'm gonna address in the next video. This needs to open up significantly or else you're gonna, again, have too much stress on uh, the lower back. So the bottom line is, I don't believe anybody has a body type or whatever that is forced into this. This, like me, it's a choice on whether or not you do things the easy way or are you gonna to go to the more advanced and do things the hard way? And again, if you wanna start bringing, bridging the gap, close squats, uh, two-legged squats with the, with the knee and feet together is a good way to go about it. I'll uh, see you on the next video about that glute and hamstring action. Let me know your questions below. Be fit, live free.